Okay. So cougar hysteria. There's a cougar in the neighborhood. They're coming after me. I'm positive I got a cougar here. Well, as I said, a high percentage of the cases we investigate aren't really. So let's go through some of these. Now in Wisconsin, they have been at the forefront of cougar expansion to the east. And there we have trained, I go out and have trained every year since 1990, um, every other year in the early years, every year of late, tracking teams. And I have 300 trackers and we've divided the state into about 165 blocks. Uh, there's only 154 on this map at that time. And people adopt a block, they have to track um, three good track surveys in the winter through there. Everybody comes in in the spring resorts, reports their results, and we have a publication that comes out every year on this. This is the largest carnivore tracking project in the world. It started out for um, wolves, but then we included cougars and we've included all the carnivores now. So it's the largest geographic tracking car, uh, survey in the world. And that gives us a very good handle on the cougars that come into Wisconsin. Uh, we, using the tracking survey documented 1980 through 2009, going from uh, five packs to 162, 25 wolves to 626 wolves. My cohort partner in this is a fellow by the name of Adrian Weideman and John Olson have been two of the key people behind keeping this project going. And so I train these trackers every year and they also take a written exam every year. In any given year, we have over 300 trackers. Well, let's do a couple of case studies. Uh, this one is a cougar that was first caught on a camera in Minnesota and um, probably had come in from North Dakota area across the Mississippi River. And then it came into Wisconsin. Uh, the uh, symbols on here are cougar sightings in given year, 2009, 2010, 2011. But whoops, hit the wrong button there. Uh, what we're looking for are these ones that are circled. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, early on, we had a cougar that came across the state and my trackers crossed it, uh, tracked it completely across the state from Northwest to Southeast. How do we know it's the same cougar? We follow the tracks to day beds. We got scat, we got hair, we did DNA. It disappeared and a while later, it was shot and killed down here in Chicago by the police. Well, the cougar I'm showing you right now, uh, we started picking up on December 2009 and followed it across the state. Uh, and we followed it up into here. And uh, eventually we lost that particular cougar, but we know it was the same one because we had DNA on it. We think it was the one photographed in Wisconsin. And lo and behold then, uh, what happens is it ends up killed by being hit by a car clear over here on the right side. If you can just see it on the right of your side there in Connecticut. We know it's the same cougar because we had the DNA and we had the cougar. So we can tell you it was a male, it was a young male dispersing. So basically it came, oh, and the DNA when we checked it down originated probably over near the Rosebud Indian Reservation uh, in that stock of cougars. So it came South Dakota, hypothesis, North Dakota, Minnesota here into Wisconsin. We think it probably went North up here because although the population is pretty darn heavy up here in Canada, it's not as heavy as going through Chicago and it came over and, and it was killed in June, I believe it was in Connecticut. In September, I was doing the cougar ecology and verification workshop in New York and a lady came to me and said, well, I had a cougar in my backyard and I collected a scat. I said, well, give it to us. And lo and behold, it was the scat of this male cougar. So we think it went north. It came into New York, down south through New York, uh, defecated in her yard, down to Connecticut where it got hit by a car. Uh, that's um, possibly a route of 1600 miles across the United States. Um, and that makes it the longest known distribution of a cougar, um, not a distribution, longest known, known migration of a cougar, young male probably looking for sex. Uh, that'll get you in trouble all the time. Uh, but it is definitely a record uh, interaction. And there's now a book out that tells that cougar story. And I need to get a copy of it myself to look at. 
Well, let's play with some Cougar verification case studies. People make honest errors and they don't really know wildlife as well as you'd think they might. And so some of the stuff that claims to be cougars are just innocent errors. Uh, this particular one here was a photograph sent me. I have not put the name up. David Nails has provided me other photographs, but this was supposedly a cougar. All watchers see that's a bobcat. But how about a few others here? Uh, this was for a long time floating around on the internet. It was on a website initially of the Delaware Zoo, and it was uh, broadcast in the Delaware Zoo's web page and then on the internet as a cougar. Hey, guess what? Bobcat also, but that's just an honest mistake. How about other honest mistakes? I love this one. This one is um, uh, Dick Arnold, who claims to be an expert on cats. And uh, he's seen one cougar twice. And uh, over near his house, he um, claims that it was a cougar he saw there and he had a footprint to prove it. And Arnold, to prove he's a cougar, also cites the attack 10 years ago on his teenage son by a smaller member of the family, the lynx. Well, there's no lynx in that area. Might have got into it, the bobcat. But he has front paw prints near his home as positive proof that that was the cougar. Well, um, one theory uh, involving that cougar has that it came from a game farm as a release pet. I'll come back to that later. But here's the uh, photograph for you right here of cougar tracks showing the front foot and the back. And you may remember this morning, if you saw that, Brad pointed out that the toes are teardrop shaped, the track is wide, there may be two lobes. There's the front track, the back track, there's two lobes. And Dick says, this is the cougar track that positively proves he had cougars near his home in Collegeville. <coughs> Dog, back that up. What do we see? Prominent claws. Cats can show claws. Claws is not a foolproof piece, but these are wide claws. They're not the needle sharp claws of a cat. One lobe. Toes are evenly spaced. They're not a um, asymmetrical lopsided circle with a big toe and a low toe. This is a dog dick. Sorry, not a cougar. Uh, lots of bobcat stuff gets sent to us. Everything I'm showing you here is a bobcat that was sent in as positive proof of cougars. So probably the most common animal uh, we get for reports as cougars are bobcats. And uh, this animal here is a fisher. And we had people on sign verified that that was a fisher. Possibly fishers are dark brown to almost black. That may be the report uh, of um, uh, what causes some of the black panther reports up in the fisher country. Now, the problem with observers of all sorts, and a lot of these folks here uh, today on the web are observers out in the park for wildlife and so on. Um, and you're probably familiar a bit with this, is the perspective issue. How big is something? This is a Wisconsin report here, turned in as a cougar roaming the field. So we went out and set up our investigation there. And uh, here's the pickup with a man standing in the same spot. Back that up. You see the spot on the ground there, right here. We're gonna put the man right there. Damn, I hope that cougar doesn't go after his knee kneecap. Could be kind of hard on him. Okay, perspective. Uh, you know, it was blades of grass. If that were a cougar, that grass would be, each blade would be pretty wide. But you can see a tree farther back that gives you a bit of a hint on the perspective of the size. Here's another one that was sent to us, positive verification, mountain lion. This one's Minnesota. And I put four red dots in here. One, two, three, four because the person also on his camera had other pictures, including one of him carrying water. I matched dots up. What do you think, folks? Is that a cougar going that way? Eh, kind of doubtful there. That's a nice bobcat. Okay, this one's out of Missouri, uh, where there have been a lot of reports, a lot, a lot of cougar hysteria down there. And um, that's supposed to be positive proof of a cougar. So what Missouri officials did is they got together some of the 
folks, and they made life-size cutouts of the cats. House cat, 10 and a half inches tall, the shoulder. Bobcat, 17 inches. Cougar, 27.5 inches. Average cat size, and you see what those cutouts look like next to each other. And then they went back out to the site, and you'll notice the uh, porch post here and the porch right here, that opening there, and that is the house cat cut out there. If you look, you can see that house cat matches that house cat. You see its little tail over there on the side matches up the little tail up there. And here is the bobcat in that opening from the same spot. And here is the cougar in that opening from the same spot. There's the original photograph. What you think, folks? I think somebody's got a dark colored house cat there. Well, Wisconsin has done a lot of work on this and currently Jane Widenhoff and Dave McFarland are doing most of the work there. Started out with Adrian White and John Olson, my partners. Now, uh, they've had a change in administration starting the government on down through the DNR. So I'm not 100% positive our webpage is still up, but if you went to it, dnr.wiforwisconsin.gov, and worked through topic, wildlife habitat, cougar, uh, and then look the tabs, sightings, photos, and hoaxes, you'll find a lot of this good stuff that I'm showing you on here right now. So most of that stuff that I showed you is all honest errors. What about the scammers out there? Oh yeah, the scammers like to play on cougars. Now I get sent into our professional website, tracksceneinvestigation.com, TrackSceneInvestigation.com is our legal site. I get stuff sent in all the time to identify on cougar photos and cougar tracks. So let's look at some out and out scams. Okay, this one is a very interesting one. Um, this is positive proof of a mountain lion taken in Susquehanna County, uh, somewhere out in New York or something or other. And notice the cougar in here. Uh, the camera is not focusing well up on snowflakes there and snowflakes right here. Oh, Susquehanna, New York, that's where it was. Uh, and that's positive proof that there was this cougar in New York. Well, a little bit of investigation and tracking it down, I found out that this same set of photos proved that it was in Tomahawk, Eagle River, Sawyer County, Wisconsin, South Dakota, Iowa, New York, Pennsylvania, all had the same photographs proving that that cougar was in those locations. Hmm. Well, a little homework, there's your original photographs. See the snowflakes out of um, focus in them. There's that bar across the top of the cougar, mouth open, you can match the teeth up there. And guess what? This was taken by Dave Rogers on his back porch down in Lander, Wyoming. And those are his original photographs of the cougar peering in the window and saying, what's going on inside there? But uh, I would say, let's see. Pennsylvania, New York, Iowa, South Dakota, four, five, six, seven, eight different uses by scammers to prove that cougars exist where they want them to exist. This is another one out of New York. It's purported to be a mountain lion. And uh, it was um, the area is somewhere named deposit. That doesn't mean anything to me, going after a grouse. And there's several interesting things there. Um, looks an awful lot like a bobcat to me. Sure wished we could see the tail. And um, notice all that mound of snow piled up around that bird's feet. Um, possibly a little bit of shadow there. Mound of snow piled up here. Uh, definitely, evidently a piece of shadow there. Looks to me like two taxidermy mounts, one of a bird and one of a bobcat, and certainly not a cougar. That just it's not a cougar. Scam, scam. Okay, this is a favorite one. This is a mountain lion that was supposedly killed in West Virginia. And uh, it was a pretty good sized mountain lion. It was supposedly hit between Grantsville and Walker, West Virginia. Game and fish had to come out and kill it. And the cougar charged the game and fish guy in the process. Look at the size of his paws. Now we've been talking about cougars, talk more about them biology later on. Look at the width of that nest and the paws. This is definitely a big male. And it was killed in West Virginia. Oh yeah? Well, 
I found it on the internet elsewhere. It was hit between Eagle River and Woodruff, Wisconsin. Game and Fish had to come and put him down. He charged the Game and Fish officer. You look at that fellow's face. Oh, that's the same guy there. That's the same cougar. You see the hand right there, the hand right there. Well, killed in West Virginia, but it was also killed in Wisconsin. Hmm, but the internet doesn't lie. Well, we tracked it down. And this was actually a lion that was hit on Highway 64th in Williams, Arizona. And uh, the person in the picture is the Department of Public Services offer, officer that was issued a salvage permit um, to pick the lion up. And he happens to do taxidermy work. So he volunteered to skin the lion. Uh, supposedly he did have to doing dispatch the lion. It made a lunge in his direction. Um, and no Arizona Game Fish Department personnel were involved to verify the story. Scam scam okay now some of the case studies come in they've left me wondering over the years this one's interesting six month old male deer 70 pounds hanging 12 foot high in the crotch in delaware county new york a closer view of it in the lower right hand corner well harley shaw wrote the field guide to mammal tracking one of the greatest early cougar workers uh, I've conferred with Harley, I've conferred with Tony Ruth, I've conferred with uh, Kerry Murphy here in the ecosystem, myself, uh, Texas uh, cougar person I worked with. No one has ever known a cougar to uh, put a deer up in a tree. However, uh, fishers will cache food in the tree. That's uh, a member of the weasel family. It's bigger than Martin, but smaller than a wolverine. However, 70 pounder, that's a little bit big. But 20 foot or 12 foot high kind of reminds me of somewhere where someone might have had a deer stand hanging and shot a deer that they hung up either to cure out or because they didn't want it. But uh, food hung in a tree is not a cougar behavior. And I do not take this as positive proof of cougars in New York there. Okay, so I hope you had a little bit of fun on that section there on uh, cougar verification and what we get and what we have to work with. Of the 500 plus reports we received in Boulder, remember well over 100 of them we threw out as being F or in other words, not cougars. Uh, let's open her up again for questions. Hi Jim, uh, we've had several coming in. Um, First of all, could you clarify the date of that Collegeville incident? Oh boy, not off the top of my head. I'd have to go back in and get into the slide, but that's a long guy time back. We're talking easily two decades back or so, and that's beyond my memory. Sorry. Awesome. That's okay. And uh, another one, um, have there been any instances of state or federal agencies reintroducing cougars? And um, if you can clarify the ones that you're aware of. Uh, let me back up to the other one for a second. If the person that submitted that question dropped me an email, I will go back through and see. There's probably a date on that newspaper clipping, but I'm going to have to look it up. And uh, cougar introductions have been extremely rare across the West. Um, I am absolutely not aware of any in Colorado, Wyoming, or um, Montana. Nothing's coming to my mind right now. Although you hear rumors all the time, you hear people blaming Department of Natural Resources for reintroducing cougars. Hey folks, you don't have to reintroduce them here in the West. They're all here. Now, when I get to the pet section later, uh, we have a lot of pets that are brought in and pets that do escape. And I'll go over a lot of that then. But reintroductions by, um, Department of Natural Resources are very low in spite of what you hear in the rumor mill. It's all part of cougar hysteria. The greatest rumor mill on that was, oh, they introduced all sorts of cougars all over the state of Missouri. Missouri did not introduce those cougars. And many of the Missouri conservation officers, game wardens, are students of mine in the ecology uh, and verification class. And a couple of them have been there for their whole careers, you know, spanning 40 years. There's no reintroductions there. Okay, back to you. Um, Jim, can you address, or maybe you will be addressing, um, 
obviously you've talked about there not being any cougars of all the sightings that you've investigated in upstate New York or New England area. Um, what is the likelihood that we have cougars moving into that area? Um, well, that's a complex issue that I will address more later on. Uh, I will say there are no breeding populations of wild cougars in that area. We certainly know cougars can get out there. I gave you an excellent example of one coming through New York into uh, Connecticut. However, the big problem is pet cougars, and folks need to see that presentation on pet cougars to get some sort of a handle on okay, why we could have a cougar. But I will say there is absolutely no breeding population in there. You got to consider Pennsylvania and New York have a couple of the greatest, largest uh, numbers of hunters ever out there in a week. Uh, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I do know them in Wisconsin, 700,000 deer hunters in one week. And hunters are a tremendous sampler. Roads and cars are tremendous samplers. And poor cougars out there succumb to both. But stay tuned, folks, for pets. Let's take a few-minute break here, and let me get that queued up, and everybody can do their bathroom run. 